In this highly requested episode on the Dive Saga channel, we're going to discuss how you can use your GoPro and turn your photos into this and your videos into this with 25 tips, no less. So take your notebooks and let's get started. Brand new year, brand new tips and 25 tips. Now to make it easy for all of you, I've divided them into 12 photo tips and 12 video tips and then one overarching bonus tip at the very end that applies both to photo and to video. You might know some of these tips already but hopefully between the 25 of them there's some golden nuggets in there for you. There's been a lot of requests for this video uh, mainly over on our Instagram page. Uh, you can often vote for these episodes or you can request episodes both in the comments and on the Instagram page so go follow there and of course subscribe to the channel. Let's Let's start with photo tip number one and that's the settings right super important because depending on uh, when you bought your GoPro which GoPro you bought uh, who has used the GoPro in the meantime the settings tend to change all over the place now it's very important if you're going for photography to use the highest possible photography settings that seems a bit like a no-brainer but the amount of people who are shooting at the ridiculously low quality and then say why can't I get my photos any good um, that's just mind-boggling now I'm gonna put a link below with my personal GoPro settings um, so you can just emulate those there's another video there's no need um, you know doing that again in this exact same video but it leans very closely to number two and that is do not shoot video and then take stills right the majority of people that I encounter uh, who can't get good enough quality photos is because what they do is they say well I'll just shoot 4k video and then whenever there's something I like I'll take a still out of there you can do that but do not be surprised if those photos photos right aren't gonna be very good um, if you're shooting video that's great if you're shooting photo that's great there's a reason why you can't toggle so easily between photo and video on a GoPro and that's because they of course have very different purposes even a 4k video is nowhere near the quality that you can get when you're trying to get a photo so as a nice New Year's resolution no more screenshots from your videos okay tip number three should be obvious but I am going to put it here just to reiterate for all of you if you are taking photos you need to be still I know GoPro markets their especially their newest cameras on the incredible low light capabilities um, and so that might lead you to think that it's you know you can kind of do whatever and the photos are gonna be super crisp being super still even with these newer generation GoPros is going to dramatically improve your image right whenever you're moving the GoPro really has to scramble to get a somewhat decent image that isn't too blurry so you can help it a lot you can help the hardware and the software in giving them an easier time to just capture a nice stable shot that actually looks good and in terms of helping your GoPro the GoPro is built with very specific characteristics in mind because it's sort of a wide-angle lens you might think that you can shoot anything from super close to super far but in reality GoPro is only really very good at a very specific distance from the subject and that is somewhere between three and six feet right if you go closer than three feet to your subject you're actually going to get a blurry picture and that's because the focal length of that wide angle lens simply isn't suitable for very close-up photography you can buy uh, little little lenses that you can put in front of your GoPro that will enable you to do macro photography but unless you have those stay at least three feet away 
I also wouldn't go much further than six or maybe 10 feet because you're going to lose your subject in the distance. And of course, I hear you think, but I can crop, but then you're gonna lose pixels, right? You're gonna lose resolution if you're trying to blow up part of the image. So if there's any way at all to get within three to six feet of your subject, you're gonna get the best shots with your GoPro. Tip number five on getting the best possible photos with your GoPro is, uh, it's actually a general photography trick, but I find myself explaining it a lot to people. So it's worth putting here as well, but that is to shoot upwards. Whenever we're doing underwater photos, we're shooting underwater, we, we have this tendency to shoot down and that's because our proper orientation in the water, proper buoyancy is of course horizontal. And so that kind of means that your head is usually somewhat pointed downwards and so I get it it's very tempting to just shoot whatever is below you but that makes that your subject and your background are kind of pancaked on top of each other and there's no depth what makes a good photo is often being easily able to interpret the foreground the subject and the background and so the best way to generate that underwater is to actually try and get a little bit lower than your subject maybe just below the substrate if you have to of course without damaging anything and trying to get some nice blue background the water which is not gonna nicely separate your foreground and your background so next time you go diving with your gopro even if it's a, another diver you're photographing or an animal or a nice uh, bit of reefscape or a wreck try to get that lower angle shooting up and i promise you it's gonna look very good. Tip number six is to try and think about the negative space. Now that's another um, basic photography trick that isn't necessarily particular to the GoPro. But what do we mean by negative space? Negative space means that a photo needs space to breathe. It needs elements of nothingness, elements of non-importance. So let's say that we're shooting a, a diver and we're taking a picture of a diver, right? Now, let's say I'm the diver and this is the frame and you're photographing me like this. See, there's their negative space is in the completely wrong place because where I'm, you can't see where I'm looking and it's actually somewhat uncomfortable to look at. Now, if we reframe the shot, in this case, I'll move, and I'm looking this way, it's actually a lot more comfortable for you to look at that photo because you subconsciously can see some space. You can see the direction that I'm looking at. And so when you're framing up your shots, and let's say a diver is swimming from uh, right to left, give some space on the left side. If the diver swimming left to right, give some space on the right side. The same thing goes for fish. The same thing even goes to, a, to an extent for inanimate objects. So for instance, a shipwreck, if the bow is clearly distinguishable, it's actually nice to give a little bit of breathing room to the bow and get a nice, uh, a nice composition. That's going to drastically improve the quality of your shots. For tip number seven, so a lot of you actually try to take shots of other divers and, and that's great. There's nothing more rewarding than, than getting cool pictures of yourself while scuba diving. So often everybody wants to buddy up with the guy who, or the girl who takes good shots, right? So if all you have is a GoPro, you can absolutely still take great shots of other divers. But the key here is that you have to dare to ask them to model for you. I know not many divers really wanna sacrifice a dive just for modeling, but the best sort of scuba diver shots, the best buddy photos, don't just happen by, you know, quickly pointing a camera and snapping a picture. A lot of those pictures are crafted, right? There's a lot of videos on this channel about underwater uh, diver portrait photography, and I'll link those below. But essentially, just dare to ask your buddies to model for you. Which brings me to the next tip. Tip number eight, is to shoot on the inhale. And what do I mean by that? Well, of course, when we're breathing underwater, we're both inhaling and exhaling, but when we're exhaling, a lot of bubbles come out and they can actually obstruct the face. Bubbles also tend to move relatively fast. And so depending on the, the shutter speed of your GoPro, which is automatic, um, it might just become blurry, right? And uh, you've all made them, you've all made those 
photos of your dive buddy and the bubbles look all blurry and it just looks kind of sloppy. So the best way to overcome this is actually shoot on the inhale. And that goes back to point number seven, dare to ask someone to model. You can actually ask your buddy to perhaps very slowly have a creepy inhalation, right? Now, never compromise your actual breathing because we can never hold our breath, obviously, scuba diving, but you can maybe manipulate a little bit the rate at which your body is breathing and you can certainly decide when you take those shots. So you're gonna get those nice clean shots, not obstructed by bubbles. My ninth tip for GoPro underwater photography would be to decide whether you're going to shoot horizontal or vertical. And this actually ta uh, sort of taps in a little bit into our um, uh, social media usage of the photo, right? If you are, for instance, using these photos on Instagram, there's a really good chance that you're gonna wanna shoot your photos vertically, right? So holding your GoPro sideways. And the reasoning behind that is that when you're scrolling on Instagram, obviously your phone is vertically oriented and so you get the most screen real estate if you have a vertically cropped photo. Now I'm using the word crop because yes, you could take a horizontal photo and crop it vertical, but remember, again, you're sacrificing those sweet, sweet pixels. Uh, well, you could actually plan that. So if you already know why you're shooting and where it is these photos might end up, you can very much premeditate which way you're going to orient your GoPro. And by the way, keep in mind that the internal sensors of the GoPro know whether it's being held horizontal or vertical, and so the software will just flip the screen and the photo will know which way it's oriented. Our 10th tip for GoPro photography underwater is to, of course, color correct your photos. Now, I've given this tip before, but I just think it's such a, it's a, it's a world altering uh, concept, is just download the Dive Plus app. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't even know who owns or runs Dive Plus, but download the app, it's for, there's a free version. And with literally one tap, you can color correct your photos to a somewhat appropriate white balance. Now, the newer generation of GoPros are getting pretty good at having somewhat proper color rendition even underwater, but if you open that Dive Plus app, you'll have a slider, you can experiment a little bit, but just restoring those white balances on the fly, it does wonders for your photos. And then tip number 11, and this is a little bit more going meta on a larger scale, depending on where you're planning for these photos to end up. Let's say it's, you know, I've used Instagram a couple times as an example. Um, you might wanna think about what your style is. See, I mentioned color correction, or at least adjusting the white balance, but you're still gonna have to make some artistic choices, right? Are your photos slightly more green? Are they slightly more blue? Are they saturated or desaturated, right? Um, maybe they're black and white, maybe they're blue and white. There's a lot of different photographers out there who have a very distinct personal style. And so as you're color correcting these photos, and especially when they're, when they're living together on, let's say, a web page, a profile somewhere, it's very nice to have a recognizable style. That's more than just slapping a little signature or a name on the bottom of the photo, is having a style that enables people to recognize that a photo is your photo. And that leads into our last photo tip for GoPros underwater, and that is actually create a portfolio. Have somewhere for your photos to live. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, I mean, I, it's like they're on my phone, I know where they are. Um, and, and that's fine, right? But nobody is really intrigued by photographers who are scrolling on their phone. Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm sure the photo is somewhere here. I think it was on January 3rd, almost there. Nobody cares, right? Nobody wants to sit and wait for you to pull up that cool photo that you took a while ago. So having somewhere for your photos to live, and there's a ton of websites uh, and social media platforms that you can use, um, is a very good idea. Even if you're just sort of starting out, it'll be nice for you too in the future to go back, look at those particular dives, those particular trips, and for all those photos to live together. So do that now, because the longer you wait, the more you're gonna have to sort of go back in time and try to, you know, get scrape your old photos together. If you do it now, you're basically getting a head start, and you in two years from now will be so grateful that you did that. 
This is a scuba diving YouTube channel, so a lot of our inner workings depend on the amount of subscribers that we do or don't have. So if you're enjoying this content so far, consider subscribing to the channel. You can even tap on the bell icon, that way you get a notification every time we post a new video. Now, let's continue with our 25 tips for using a GoPro underwater with number 13, or as I like to call it, number one, but for video. And that would be, once again, be considerate of your settings. Very specifically, I'd like to point out shooting in a linear um, lens setting. The GoPro is capable of going very, very wide angle, even super view, and it's super cool for certain effects. Maybe you're doing a giant stride and you're selfieing yourself, but in general, when you're just filming underwater, reefscapes, other divers, linear setting looks the most professional, if you will. That's because when you shoot in wide angle and especially in super view, if you look at the edges of your frame, they're very warped, right? And that's that wide angle effect doing its, uh, doing its job. So again, nothing wrong with that, but sort of um, for, for everyday shooting, try linear and tell me what you think. I think you'll find that it looks almost professional, so to speak. Tip number two for GoPro video underwater, and it still ties into the settings, and it's maybe a bit contradictory to what you might be thinking, but I'm actually going to advocate for not shooting on your maximum settings, not shooting uh, your highest possible frame rate, your highest possible quality, 4K, 6K, 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second, because what's gonna end up happening is you're going to end up using a lot of storage space, especially for video, and you're going to potentially overheat your camera while doing that. So just consider where these videos are going to live and more about that later, but is the medium that you're going to be posting, storing, playing these videos on, is it even capable of playing back in 6K or 8K? Are you going to slow down the videos eight times? So is shooting at 240 frames per second really necessary, right? So maybe get in the water, play a little bit with the different resolutions and the different um, frame rates, and then consider what it is that you need and stop there. Your battery life is going to benefit hugely. Now, somewhat contradictory to the previous point is actually point number three, which is depending on what it is you're shooting, it might be worth bumping up the frame rate just a little bit. 30 frames per second is of course the bare minimum, but 60 or maybe even 120 can sometimes be useful. Why? Let's say you're in a sort of high uh, octane environment, uh, maybe you're lucky enough to be in a sardine run or maybe there's some cool shark action going on. Shooting at, for instance, 120 frames per second is going to enable you to slow down your footage without losing any information. If you bring down 120 frames per second back to 30 frames per second, that means every second in real time is now worth four seconds of footage and it's still gonna be a butter smooth, non-jittery experience to watch. So that's a great way of making your shots, um, making them count, right? Making every second worth four seconds. So not a tool to always use, but again, is worth experimenting with your frame rates. Tip number four for shooting with a GoPro underwater is to plan out your movements. A lot of people, um, I call them lawnmower divers. I don't know, some people call them sh like machine gun divers, I think. Whereas like the GoPro just goes like this, and they're just like mowing down everything and trying to get everything, and it's nauseating to watch. So. If you see something that you think is worthwhile, something that needs to go in your video or that you wanna capture, plan out that movement. If it's a diver, are you going to start at their fins and slowly move up and reveal their face? Or if you wanna show how deep they are, are you going to start with a shot towards the surface and then slowly move down along the wall to reveal their face, right? What are you trying to, to show, to reveal? Which story or which sense of movement are you trying to convey? Maybe Maybe it's none. Sometimes it's really rewarding to just have a nice, stable shot, 
that just happens in front of you. It's actually gonna look really high quality. The thing that makes these amateur GoPro footages look so amateur is often that they're very, very, you know, jittery and they're moving around and there's a little bit left, a little bit right again, left again, and there's like no forethought and it makes it seem a bit um, erratic, right? So try to plan out your shots. Try to, as you're diving on the fly, plan out those movements. You gotta think on your feet. My fifth piece of advice for using GoPro underwater is actually a piece of equipment, but it's a very, very simple, very cheap piece of equipment. And it's these little moisture absorbing tabs, right? So you can buy these on, let's say Amazon, I'll, I'll put a link below. They cost literally nothing and you slide them into your GoPro housing. Just make sure they're not in front of the lens or the screen. And if there's any form of condensation, any form of moisture that enters the housing during the dive, they will take care of that. They'll absorb it. So um, it's just a little tiny trick, but I actually find that it saves me uh, a lot of dives. You know, it's, it's the worst when you're doing a super cool dive and the GoPro just starts sort of fogging over the, 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 the lens. That's the worst. So these little moisture absorbing tabs are lifesavers. And staying in the equipment sphere with point number six would be to get a tray. So a little tray, you can find them again on Amazon or any other photography site. It's very, very economical, but it allows you to stabilize your footage. I mentioned earlier that jittery shots are kind of a dead giveaway of an amateur videographer. And because GoPro is so small, and if you just hold the GoPro in your hand, you don't have a lot of mass to work with. So putting them on a tray and then moving your hands um, a couple feet apart actually allows you to have nice and stable shots. It's gonna help with shot planning and execution. And it's actually also going to prevent you from moving erratically because you have those two arms locked. If you're still with us, now would be a good time to subscribe if you haven't already, because at this point, if you're still here, I'm thinking that you're finding this pretty uh, valuable content. The seventh recommendation I would make is another gear recommendation. So on top of our moisture absorbers and our trays, I would also get a video light, a nice, simple, maybe let's say a 5,000 lumens video light. It's not gonna break the bank. Not a uh, dive light, because those tend to be spot lights. You need a video light with a wide, even beam. Um, that's going to dramatically increase the quality of your footage because of course the deeper you go and especially if you dive um, in, in not so sunny maybe overcast areas you're gonna have low light situations and a video light is of course going to place the light source nice and close to your subject and is going to dramatically improve the amount of detail that you can capture. Point number eight for uh, shooting video on GoPro is a little bit of a cheat because I also gave it in the photo section but it's worth mentioning again do not shoot downwards again video is so blah and boring when you just shoot downwards and I know people say yeah but there was a little stingray or there was a little flounder I couldn't really get underneath I get it and for some shots maybe a top-down shot providing that you have a nice contrast between let's say the sand and the southern stingray um, besides those shots Really, again, try to get below your subjects. Try to shoot upwards a little bit and get that nice definition. On your next dive, go out, try it, I promise you. Tip number nine already for shooting video on GoPro is shoot at people, not behind people. I know that often when we go diving, we're maybe following a dive guide or because we're into videography, we're a little bit behind the group. And so a lot of footage that comes back, especially from my students where they go, huh, huh, what do you think? And it's like divers from behind, it's fins and butts, right? And it's, I mean, yeah, like I guess those are nice fins or whatever, but it's nicer to see faces. We want to see faces. When we see scuba diving videos, we want to see scuba divers, right? So try to get a little bit ahead, try to get in front. It goes back to that modeling tip maybe also from our photography section. Try to get ahead of your subject and try to see them coming towards you. Try to see them enjoying the dive. If you wanna film another diver and incorporate that in your video, that's fair game. People like watching other people but make sure we can actually see the people. And that leads us straight into tip number 10, which is if you're going to incorporate other divers, dive buddies into your videos, make sure they look good. And what do I mean by that? Dangling gauges, dangling alternate air sources, horrible trim, 
uh, loose cylinder bands. Make sure your divers look good, right? It's gonna elevate the, uh, the perceived quality of your footage when the people, the divers in the footage are actually good divers, when they're diving properly. So if sometimes all it takes is to notice that your dive buddy's SPG is dangling and have them tuck it in, right? Sometimes, you know, let's say their trim is maybe slightly off, I tend to go even lower and shoot more upwards, so it kind of changes the, the, the perception of the perspective. Um, but ideally, manicure your dive buddies a little bit to look like competent divers. And maybe your dive buddies are already competent divers. That's also very possible. Tip number 11 for shooting video on your GoPro underwater. Uh, again, uh, borrows a little bit from our photo tips and that's again considering the orientation of your camera. I think a lot of people are used to when they're shooting photos to kind of, you know, consider the, the angle, but we now live in an age where a lot of your video content might also be consumed on a phone, meaning also be consumed with vertical orientation. And even more so than with photos, you have less pixels to play with in video, uh, even when you shoot at those higher resolutions, if you must. But um, if let's say you're posting a reel on Instagram, uh, you might want to shoot vertically and actually maximize the amount of pixels you can get. So again, premeditate where this content is going to go. And that already brings us to tip number 12, the last tip in the video section for shooting GoPro underwater, and that is to edit your videos, right? Um, more so even than photos, you need to ask yourself where, where are all these video clips going to live, right? You cannot store endless video footage on your phones anyway, maybe on your laptops, I guess, or some external hard drives, but probably you're only going to have so much good footage afterwards. And so select that, go through that, stitch that together. There are very basic apps like Movie Maker um, or more advanced apps like uh, Final Cut Pro, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve. So whatever it is you like to use, uh, consider stitching your good stuff together so you have a coherent something to watch for, uh, for your audience. So then we're missing one more final tip and that's an overarching tip which uh, it really applies to both photo and video and that's to shoot, shoot, shoot. Often, and this is my number one sort of advice to students coming back with footage, they say, look what I got. And I say, oh, that's really nice. Let's, let's look at the ones before that and the ones after that. And they're very different photos you're going to have to learn to craft your shots. And by that I mean, if you wanna take a portrait shot of a dive buddy, you're gonna have to take more than one, right? You're gonna need to take 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes out of your dive and set that up and try to move around a little bit and find the angle that works best. And as we said, try to shoot between the breaths. If you have a, a video shot that you're trying to put together with some motion, you're gonna have to do that a couple of times, rehearse that movement a couple of times, but shoot those rehearsals, right? Because they might be good. Um, but usually when, when I kind of look at my work and there's like 30, 40, 50 shots per photo, um, it's often one of the last ones that ends up, sometimes even the very last one that's like the winning shot and, and I'm like, oh my God, if I would have stopped after half of these, I would have never gotten to that final excellent shot. So next time you go out scuba diving, you bring your GoPro, whether it's photo or video you're doing, try to spend time on each shot. Try to really build that shot, rehearse that shot and perfect that shot and I promise you, Every time the last uh, take, let's call it, is going to be the winning take. I guarantee it. So thank you guys for watching. That's our 25 tips for photo and video on GoPro underwater. If you haven't subscribed to the channel by now, I don't know what you're doing because we are putting out some pretty good content. If you're still here, I'm assuming you agree. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.